What's up guys, my name is Brock, you're watching The Modest Man, and today we're talking about nine simple ways to start dressing better today. So if you wanna start dressing better but you're not sure where to start, this video is for you. Dressing well doesn't have to be expensive, it doesn't have to be complicated, it definitely doesn't require you to run out to the store and buy a bunch of new things. In fact, I think for most guys, the solution is to subtract things from your wardrobe, not to add a bunch of new stuff, uh, at least until you kind of understand what you need to buy. You know, if you're like most guys, you probably have a lot of stuff in your closet that you never actually wear. You probably have a lot of stuff that doesn't fit properly, and so you either never wear it, or you do wear it, but it's not doing you any favors. You know, maybe you have too many colors in your closet and you don't really know how to combine them. And most likely you might be missing a few key items that would help complete your wardrobe and take your style to the next level. So if you're nodding your head right now, if any of this describes your situation, it's okay, you haven't done anything wrong. You know, most guys just aren't really taught how to dress well anymore, even if they have great parents. But the good news is, I really think this video will help, especially if you're kind of a beginner when it comes to style. All right, tip number one, size down. By far the biggest style mistake that I see guys making is wearing clothes that don't fit and flatter their build. Most guys are simply wearing clothes that are too big for them. You know, I see a lot of shorter guys wearing uh, pants that are two or three inches too long. I see a lot of thin guys wearing shirts that are just too baggy or broad guys wearing clothes that don't fit in the shoulders or the neck. When in doubt, try to size down. So if you think you're a size medium, you've been wearing medium your whole life, try on a small. Maybe you're an extra small guy and you're too embarrassed to buy an extra small shirt. You know, just do it. Who cares what size you wear? Wear the fit and not the label. And I'm not talking about skinny jeans. Your clothes don't have to be painted on. Uh, you should just wear clothes that kind of follow the natural curves of your body and sit kind of close to your body. Uh, that tends to be the most flattering look for most guys. Tip number two, wear fewer colors. Now there's nothing wrong with wearing bright colors or combining multiple vibrant colors into one outfit, but this is not the easiest thing to do. Most guys are only wearing colorful pieces because they don't really know what else to wear. But the fact is bright colorful pieces and pieces with multiple colors are hard to combine with other parts of your wardrobe and it's easy to mess it up. At the same time, sometimes one color can look bad on certain people. So, you know, if you have very fair skin, for example, uh, a bright saturated color, like a bright red, it might kind of wash you out and it might not look good with your skin tone. I'm not trying to scare you away from color. Color is great, you know, I really like wearing green, but my advice is to try to use one color per outfit, at least at the beginning. So think of adding one pop of color to each outfit. The best way to do this is to make sure that most of your wardrobe is neutral. By neutral, I mean colors like, you know, khaki, brown, cream, white, uh, you know, black and gray, even like navy or different shades of blue. These are colors that are very easy to combine with each other. They look good on their own, but they also form a really nice foundation that you can add other pops of color on top of. I did a whole video about the benefits of building a neutral color wardrobe, so I'll link to that down below in the description. Bottom line here is when in doubt, stick to one color per outfit. Tip number three, wear fewer patterns. So combining colors can be tough. Combining patterns can be very tough. You know, a lot of patterns tend to have multiple colors inside them. So one shirt could have three or four colors and that makes it even harder to combine with pants and jackets. So my advice is at the beginning, just stick to solid colors. And then when you do start integrating patterns, uh, go for one pattern per outfit and try to stick with patterns that just have one or two colors. So for example, uh, a gingham shirt that's navy and white or blue and green is gonna be easier to combine than a madra shirt or a plaid shirt that has four or five colors in it. And if you do this and then you just use one pattern per outfit, so like if you have a solid jacket and a solid shirt, you could wear a pattern tie, or if you have a pattern shirt, you could wear a solid jacket and a solid tie, uh, it's gonna be really easy to start incorporating patterns into your wardrobe in a way that doesn't look over the top or tacky. And when in doubt, you can always rely on solid colors. So for me, my wardrobe is probably 90% solid colors and then I just have a few patterns just to kind of spice things up a bit. Tip number four, find a tailor you can trust. So the first tip was to size down and to try to find clothes that fit when you buy new clothes, but what about all those clothes that you already own? You know, you don't wanna just get rid of them because you paid good money for them and they still have a lot of life left, but you can't wear them if they don't fit properly. 
So the solution of course is to take them to a tailor and get them altered until they fit better. I've said it before and I will say it again, tailoring is the secret weapon of stylish men. If you ask any well-dressed man whether or not they have a tailor, I guarantee they're on a first name basis with their tailor. I know this sounds weird, but finding a tailor and starting to get my clothes tailored was literally a life-changing thing for me, especially before brands like Peter Manning were out there that, that specifically make like shorter inseams. I had to get all of my pants tailored. And so once I found a tailor that I can trust, uh, I visit them like at least once a month. I know them, they know me. I leave them good, you know, a good review on Yelp. So I kind of establish that relationship. And I even have an, a whole guide that you can use to find a tailor in your area that you can trust. And I'll link to that down below. Tip number five, upgrade your shoes. So if you want a lot of bang for your buck, upgrading your shoes is a good place to start. Most guys are just wearing the wrong shoes at the wrong time. You know, I see a lot of guys in casual outfits wearing like running shoes. I see a lot of guys in business casual outfits wearing shoes that are too casual. I'm not saying you always have to wear fancy shoes or dressier shoes. You just have to wear the right shoes for the occasion. So if you love wearing sneakers and you're used to wearing like your Asics running shoes with jeans or chinos, just get yourself a pair of nice, clean, minimal sneakers like maybe a white leather sneaker. And right there, that is an instant upgrade. You know, if you like wearing convenient shoes for the airport, instead of wearing flip flops, uh, just wear like loafers or driving mocks or even Chelsea boots. And again, right there, instant upgrade. You're gonna look better than the vast majority of guys in the airport. If you're not sure where to start with your shoe collection, I have a video about the minimal shoe collection that I think is a good foundation. Just remember that your shoes are working very hard, so make sure that they're working for you and not against you. Tip number six, add an accessory. One of the easiest and most effective ways to dress up an outfit is just to add an accessory. So I'm talking about watches, ties, bracelets, pocket squares, you know, all of that kind of functional, but probably not totally necessary stuff that you can add to an outfit to add some visual interest. Even a boring outfit like shorts and a t-shirt can be spiced up a little bit with just one or two tasteful accessories like a watch and maybe some sunglasses. Another great uh, kind of simple accessory to get started is like a cuff style bracelet, just a simple cuff metal bracelet. That's a great accessory for most guys very easy to pull off. Tip number seven, remove an accessory. So you gotta be careful with accessories. It's easy to go overboard. And I see a lot of guys who are just getting into style going way overboard with accessories and it can start to look a little bit costumey. Go with two or three tasteful accessories. So for me, you know, I'm already wearing a wedding band. I'll wear a watch, some sunglasses, and maybe one more thing depending on the outfit, but usually that's about it. As the fashion designer Coco Chanel famously said, before you leave the house, look in the mirror and take one thing off. This lady knew what she was talking about, so I recommend heeding her advice. Tip number eight, learn the dress code. Great style is like a great referee. It might go unnoticed, but it doesn't make mistakes. So much of dressing well is just dressing appropriately for the occasion. Like if you've ever seen somebody at a wedding wearing an untucked shirt or casual shoes, they just kind of stick out like a sore thumb. Similarly, there's always that guy at the wedding who's got like the velvet slippers and like six accessories and a bright purple suit. And it's like they're trying way too hard. They're stealing all the attention away from the bride and groom. And just like the guy who's too casual, the guy who's too dressy and too flashy also is not dressed appropriately for the occasion. You know, both of these people are totally missing the mark just in different ways. The guy who's underdressed lacks respect for the formality of the event. They didn't read the dress code or research the dress code. And the overdressed guy just wants attention. And that's not cool, you know, because on the day of a wedding, uh, all eyes should be on the bride and groom. So think about what you're doing and where you're going. You know, is there a dress code? Uh, can you ask somebody about the dress code? Maybe it's explicit, like on a wedding invitation, or maybe it's unspoken, like in a job interview. So the bottom line here is to make sure to dress appropriately for the occasion. If you're not sure what the dress code is, just ask. When in doubt, it's okay to dress up a little bit. It's better to be overdressed than underdressed, but just try to nail the dress code for whatever the situation is. All right, last but definitely not least, tip number nine is to layer up. Just like tailoring, layering is one of those secret weapons of stylish guys. You know, wearing layers is one of the easiest ways to add some style and some visual interest and some texture to your outfit. 
uh, and it's pretty easy to do. This is one of the reasons that I think most guys who are into dressing well, or who care about their style, really love fall. Because fall is such a great season for layering. You know, the cool weather means that you can wear layers without overheating. Here are some easy layering ideas that anybody can pull off. Number one, wearing a sweater over a button-up shirt. Number two, wearing a jacket over a sweater over a button-up shirt. Number three, wearing a vest over a flannel work shirt. Number four, wearing a flannel work shirt over a Henley. Number five, wearing a jacket over a vest over a Henley. The possibilities here are truly endless, and if you need some outfit ideas, uh, I will link to my outfit archive uh, that's on themodestman.com down in the description. So to sum up, these tips may be simple, but when you use them in tandem, uh, when you use them together, amazing things start to happen. You know, we're talking about multiplication, not simple addition. For example, if you combine layering with the right color combos and great fit, you're gonna look better than 90% of guys out there. In fact, you might be the best dressed guy in the room. This stuff does take a little bit of time and effort and energy and sometimes money, but it's so worth it. You know, you're watching this video, so I know that you're willing to put in the time and the energy. So study up on these tips, start implementing maybe just one or two or three of them this week. And remember, uh, have fun with this. It is a marathon, not a sprint. So try to enjoy the process. If you have any questions for me, let me know down in the comments. Thank you as always for watching and until next time, stay stylish.